Yes, sir. Out here on a beautiful Thursday. I'm Ree! 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 <laughs> That's how excited we are. We'll go for a more casual vibe here. Joe's still got the, got the professional shirt here, but he's rocking the glasses. Joe. The Raymans. What model is I forget what model those are. They're mine, but it doesn't matter. I'm rocking the beat. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, this is a local motion sweater, actually. Local motion is a Hawaiian brand, which is Super, super sick, so get on my level is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> super, super duper, super, super sick. <laughs> <laughs> super uh, So we're going to have Brendan and Taylor Sander later on the show. It should be fun. The um, Sand Men. The Sand, yeah. What, what, Sandman is his name? So yeah, Sandman. and the Second Coming. Or, the second Coming. Or we just call him the Sand Men. <laughs> sand Bros. <laughs> the sand Men. <laughs> the Sandy Bros. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have them later on the show, hopefully, uh, Talk story, get some information, you know, make them fight each other. That'd be kind of cool if we got a fight on screen. We got a brother fight, I think. That'd be so sick. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers gotta hug. <laughs> Unfortunately, Put the money. most likely to do that would be us two. Of any of the brothers in the volleyball world. Not only most likely, it's happened before many times. <laughs> well, not on live air. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> last go. week, do you guys remember? I don't know. I'm sure our audience remembers. We sent out a poll on our Instagram uh, relating to the topic of if you had to pick one volleyball player in the world to be with you in a street fight, who would that be? And, of course, you know, most of our fans are from Hawaii, so I give them that. But I want to see a little more creativity from them. I'll be honest. You know, everybody said Uncle Pat just because he's big. Uh, I – I'm not sure how I feel if I, if I would go with Uncle Pat, but I would not go with Uncle Pat. Well, you two would be sorely mistaken. He would be easy first okay, round. Wait, 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 wait. I want to hear why he wouldn't go with Uncle Pat, though. So here's the thing. All right, I love. So Uncle, Uncle Pat. Pat is Patrick Gaspin, the middle blocker for the University of Hawaii men's team. Uncle Pat is awesome, but I just don't see him in a fight. He's kind of a gentle giant type person. If he is. He's him, a lovely I mean, boy. He can definitely get really, really angry and swing. I'm not saying he won't fight. I'm just saying I don't think he is very big, but I don't know, and he's quick. But I don't know if he'd be best in a fight. He's a gentle giant, and uh, if I punch him, you know, I want to make him mad. I would think I, you would want one of one of the uh, European. There's a bunch of European players I would choose. I would yeah, think, I would Demetrius think, or Demetrius. <laughs> Demetrius. The uh, no, I would say no. I mean, professional players like we got we got submissions like Zaitsev. He'd be a guy I'd consider. He's oh, I sure. don't know him that well, but you look at his physique. I'd be. A, I wouldn't want to fight against imagine, him. I'd probably want him on my team. Imagine walking down that alley and just seeing his eyes up like that. Just like look at the hair. I was thinking. I was thinking more. Muzerski. That's true. I was thinking more. Uh, I was thinking more college and recent ex college. You know who would be really really good? Kyle Ensing. Kyle Ensing would be one super jack, yeah. super athletic, yep. and uh, he'll, he'll get your back. Even though well, that, we were enemies, but I was thinking about the Micah Christensen when he was saying that. Uh, Sokolov was such a nice guy, but he would for sure, there's a lot of people that I'm sure he would be an easy first pick for as well. Him, you know? Like he said. And of course, Josh yeah. Tuaniga. Josh Tuaniga, we got another submission. He for sure, uh, yeah, I want him on my team if I'm fighting somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely want him on my team. I want him on the opposing side. That's Who don't sure. you want on your team? Who wouldn't you want? Yeah, was what this the I army? Want? You building the Justice League here, Joe? That's a big team. <laughs> well, I, want, I wouldn't want anybody around my size, so. I feel like me, somebody like me and Colton wouldn't work out well together. Cause, Colton's not a fighter, though. Even yeah. A, I don't know. But. Uh, all right. So, usually, this is where we get into totally exposed. And we told you guys to send in videos, which you guys did. Thank you very much for that. But we lied to you. So, I'm just kidding. We didn't lie to you. But we decided to go to a, kind of a different route. We decided to go, not every Thursday is totally exposed, but we're going to kind of mix it up. We're going to mix it up with Chalk Talks, Totally Exposed, and our new segment, Remember when. Remember when. Now, in this next segment, we're going to be talking about just funny stories that happen to us. It could be on, it could be off the volleyball court. Um, just any kind of stories. If you guys have any requests, send them in. Uh, we're going to kick this thing off. You know, 
my parents are not going to be happy that I'm telling this story, but you know what? It's for the fans, man. It's all about the fans. A little game day routine. How Gage gets ready for <laughs> matches. Here it is. I do not do this every match, but um, you know what happened? And it's legendary, so deal with it, I guess. Um, this is the time that I expo- accidentally exposed myself. To this our- could be totally exposed, I guess. <laughs> 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 exposed myself to the to our UH swim team. Expose him! In the weight room. No, where was it? Where was it? it was the, the hot tub. The hot tub. The hot In the tub hot- was- oh, my. I forgot about that. <laughs> so, uh, let's get this story here. I'm kind of a guy who... People would describe me as wild child, you know, the most naked in the locker room, the craziest guy in the locker room, right? Maniac, yeah. So if I don't pay attention, he can be taking a shirt off. It doesn't matter. All of a sudden, all my clothes are off back to death. We're going streaky! I don't even know what's going on, right? So what happens in the hot tub, right? I get my Star Wars, I get my Star Wars, uh, uh, what are they called? Boxer briefs. Uh, underwear. Boxer, uh, under briefs, like, like the tight ones. What are they? Uh, compression, compression shorts, right? Yeah. And they're all Star Wars. They come all duped out. And what happens is I, for my game day routine, <laughs> I have my headphones on. I'll, I walk into the weight room or the, uh, the trainer's room, and we go in there, get in the hot tub. And, you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm just changing. I got my headphones on, right? And the swim team just finished their practice. A Friday game, so they just finished their practices. You got someone here, and you got a bunch of people over here in the hot tub. And I'm next to the cold tub where the next to the towels are. And I'm changing, right? So if I don't pay attention, all of a sudden, uh-oh, I'm naked in the training room or something like that, right? So I'm on there, right? So there I am. I'm getting my headphones on. I'm jamming out. I'm jamming. All of a sudden, I take my shirt off. I hear a bunch of people laughing in the background noise behind my, uh, not laughing, but just kind of talking behind my headphones. <laughs> and I'm just jamming. I'm just jamming. I'm just not even thinking. And then I realize, I'm like, just something doesn't feel right right now. Like in this setting, like something's off about this setting right now. And I realize, holy crap, I'm butt naked in the middle of the training room. And I realized the thing that set me off was that there's no more talking in, in the hot tubs or anything. Utter silence. A complete silence. And the swimmer's just like, oh my God. Yeah. And I'd accidentally, because I wasn't paying attention, listen to music, gotten naked in the, tr- in the hot tubs. So you're a 20 year old. 20 year old man <laughs> 20 year old standing man. there naked in front of the and entire swim team. because you were so focused on your music exactly that that's the reason why that is why and uh, oh, i want to know what music he was listening to <laughs> i'm too sexy for my shirt too sexy for my shirt so sexy the get naked gauge subliminally show the love get yeah. <laughs> Um, so I was listening to that and I was like, oh my God. And I put everything on and I'm just like, it's kind of, kind of, it's kind of awkward there. And I'm the kind of guy who likes to break the ice. So I get my boxer briefs back on. Everyone's just like, just like looking, like trying not to make eye contact. I get back in the hot Slipped. Day. Whoop. Whatever, when everything is, I've been like, I was like, uh, sorry about that boys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop the soap. <laughs> and, uh, well, I had class with some of those guys later. So I was like, that was it. <laughs> just like, oh, uh... I wore it. I wore it like a champ still to this day. Um, so make sure you're paying attention when you're in the hot tub, guys, and, and, and I'll try and do the same, but no promises. And that has been our first story. Remember when. Remember when. Or totally exposed, whichever one you want to kind of go to. I'll right. myself to that, too. <laughs> guys, let's get to our show here. Let's get Brendan and Taylor Sander on. We've been all waiting for it. Let's cue them up. Brendan and Taylor Sander. Really? And we are joined here by Brennan and Taylor Sander. I, I kind of mixed your guys' name up, so hopefully <laughs> I got I said Sanders. Do you guys get that a lot or no? Yeah, we get it all the time. Yeah, I, I kinda, we had an introduction before this, and I kind of butchered it. So hopefully I got that right. So, I'll, so I want to talk about the first thing. Taylor, I see that you're rocking a beard. Now, personally, I'm a guy of the mustache. So how do you decide whether you're going to rock a mustache or a beard? What, what's, what goes into your mind when you're thinking about that? Well, a lot of a lot of the time, I, when I'm lazy, I'll go with the beard because I don't want to have to keep up and with all the maintenance and all that. And so, I think today I'm actually going to shave down the mustache and clean it up. Yes, I'm all about that. I'm pretty all sharp. about that. Quarantine's been, you know, keeping us all pretty lazy. So <laughs> I've had here, but then I trimmed it up for the river, and I think it's time to go to a mustache. I feel that Fu man chew. I hear that. Brennan, what about you, man? You got you to gotta be rocking some facial hair. Come on now. I, I rocked it. <laughs> uh, 
three weeks and then wasn't feeling it. Wasn't feeling it. Yeah, it I feel that. Facial hair like this guy. I feel yeah. that. My, my girl- brother's the same way. <laughs> so so let's talk about quarantine. You guys are all together. How's that a uh, relationship been? Because you guys are pretty like chill people, right? Especially with each other. Have you guys been at each other's necks or what's kind of the deal with that? Not really. Brennan's been living at my house pretty much. He comes <laughs> really? up. Can I stay with you? Uh, what? Can I stay with you? Please. Of course. Really? No. <laughs> I built a little gym in my garage, so we've been doing lifts together. Yeah, it's pretty much we we take out lift, stay fit for seasons and everything, and then we go surf or something. I just ride the barrel and get pitted, so pitted like that. Do you have to? Are you like on baby duty possibly, or like is that is that the is that the deal here we got going on, or what? Someone has to cook. Well, <laughs> the babies are out here running around right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's my duty. She just <laughs> in the back. <background. laughs> <laughs> okay so so let's kind of go into the bulk of things here uh i see that taylor you you were kind of out, off out of the game for about a year now right so so with this quarantine going into the olympics right do you think you were kind of 100 percent right or would it kind of been like you got to grit it out or was this kind of like a blessing in disguise this whole quarantine kind of making sure you're ready to go yeah i wasn't really sure uh like yeah beginning of march everything kind of shut down my shoulder was doing great i was on track to to be ready to play, you know, May, which is the start of our season for the national team. And then everything happened and I wasn't able to go in and get all my swings that I needed for the, for the week. And, you know, I had different jump counts and everything like that, but I was all, I was in the right direction. Uh, Everything was going well. And now, you know, I haven't been playing, just been lifting. And so I don't really know, but for me, it's a, it's a blessing in disguise because now I could just get my shoulder a lot stronger and you know be ready to go next year when the when the olympics come around right right and, and brendan about you so you kind of had this debate in your head and during the summer about okay am i going to continue volleyball was that the right future for me was that the right path and then eventually about what about a fourth i think a fourth into the, the pro career you probably you decided to sign with, with sign with the team in poland so i kind of want to ask you what kind of were you debating and then what kind of put you over the hump and then if Taylor kind of played a big role as a mentor or just kind of stayed out of it? Um, well, yeah, I was debating whether playing was the, the right thing for me or not. Um, just because, like, I don't know, I had like, a, a rougher summer and I kind of got canned a little bit and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then I got this offer from a team in Poland and it's a, it was a really good team, a really good club. Pretty last um, minute. Yeah, it was very <laughs> 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 things are the best you just you just go with it stick with it and write it out and uh it ended up being like probably my best season yet um and that helped a lot for me just like getting back into volleyball and like wanting to play more and more um because i love the game love playing but the like when you get into the pro aspect there's a lot of politics that goes in as well right um and it becomes less fun. But, I mean, when I went to this club in Poland, I had a ton of fun playing. I was able to play free. Um, but the Polish league is pretty insane, too. So, like, the skill level was very high. And so, yeah, it motivated me a ton to keep playing. You you played with one of – so the team that I played on this year, they had a, uh, one of their ex-teammates, Sakis, uh, was one of your teammates this past year, I know, the Greek. What is uh, both your guys' experience with – we asked Micah Christensen on the show last week about this, about uh, playing with internationals and um, what it, the positives and also uh, sort of the negatives of playing with guys from all over the world. Um, yeah, I played with uh, the Greek guy. His name's uh, Thanasis Protosatis, and he, he's a baller. That kid Wait, is how like, do you pronounce that again? Sorry. Thanasis Protosatis. Genesis Eternity Hukurumatarabu. We call him Sakis. I'm not going to try, sorry. <laughs> we'll take your word for it. <laughs> uh, the, the kid's an amazing volleyball player, like, just all around fundamentally perfect. And, the, the, like, he's shorter, um, but jumps really high. And he just uses the block, gets up, and he's really quick, so he just gets on the ball really fast. Um, but playing with a bunch of international people, everybody's different. When I got to Poland, I was super surprised because 
there's so many people you haven't heard of in Poland that are just absolute tanks. Like our opposite on my team this year, his name's Karol Butrin. And he's like not on the Polish national team or anything, but he's like one of the craziest players I've ever seen in my life. And it's just like, I had no clue who he was, but the Polish league's so good and so deep that it's like, they have a bunch of guys that are just insane. Right on. So, and, and Taylor, you played, I mean, you play, you played mostly in Italy. Uh, and then you were in Brazil your uh, the last season uh, or the season before this past one. What was the biggest uh, difference in the in the play between the Italian and the Brazilian league? Yeah, it's it, it's crazy. Um, Brazil is a little bit different because it's not as established as a league. I would say you know Italy has its fame for being the best league in the world. Everybody wants to play there. Um, but Brazil is like a little gem for me. Um, you know, it's a little bit more, it's not as glamorous, you know, the, the guys there really earn, you know, their time on the court and they earn their contracts. They work really hard. Um, you know, I think they work the hardest I've ever seen in the weight room. And for me, that was cool to be a part of. I, I haven't really been a, a part of a pro team where that's such a big part of like their everyday life. And like, them wanting to be fit, eating healthy. And, and so it's easy to go to work and be inspired rather than in Italy. Sometimes I feel like there's a, a lazy aspect and entitled aspect of being a professional volleyball player. And so being in Brazil, I think that was the main difference. I really enjoyed just going to work with them and every day it was good trainings. Everybody worked hard and I really respected that. So it was, it was cool. I, you know, couldn't ask for anything more than that. So when you talk about like the, the weight, the weight room aspect of these different teams, could you give us a little bit more of like an insight and go into detail a little bit more about the training regiment that you guys were going through, if you don't mind? Yeah, it was always, you know, lifting in the morning, uh, usually four days a week. We'd usually have one to two, two matches a, a week, but we lifted four times a week in the morning. And after every uh, weightlifting session, we did pass passing training and that was like pretty strict like you can never really get those off even if you're injured like they want you jump serving they want you passing in the morning getting a lot of reps and, and they take it really serious it's not like a you know kind of go with the motions kind of thing yeah, yeah. you know they're they set goals on how many perfect passes you want to get and then in the gym it's just you know it's heavy they just lift heavy there's nothing you know, they don't do anything different. It's just like pick up the weights and, you know, <laughs> you know. a lot of weight, a lot of reps. Yeah. And, uh, they never kept it too long. It was usually hour, hour long weight sessions and then hour long on the court. And then in the evening, there was always, you know, six on six practice. But um, right. it's really cool. It's kind of similar to every other league in the world. Yeah. So I was talking to Joe and, or Joe, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say the, for, and for both of you guys, do you guys use a similar weight training uh, program or are you, because I mean, to me, you guys are similar, similar style players or you jump incredibly high. You guys are uh, explosive athletic. Do you guys use a similar training program or do you guys uh, both kind of use your own unique program between both you two? We pretty much have like the, the same weight program, definitely over summers with Sydney P but say, yeah. we, we do it kind of by position like you guys know like setters liberos middle blockers outsides they all like your kind of designated position has a certain weight program you go through just to help with explos explosiveness and like agility and everything like that um right on. but we're definitely on the same workout plan we work out as much as we can because Tay has that workout we're on that beach That's body true. workout. Right now. <laughs> Welcome to Baywatch. Oh, man, I feel that. <laughs> trying to get jacked. Yeah. <laughs> That's, we're doing the same thing. <laughs> we're like He's biceps every day. <laughs> every, I feel that we're either doing biceps or bench every day. We're just like, you know what? Gabe tried, Gabe tried to get us out of it yesterday. I'm like, where's the, where's the arm workout? He's he tried like, to get uh, us out of it. Like, Joe dedicated an entire thing to arms, like five reps. <laughs> like arms, arms. You don't get it. The uh, so both. No, well, I, the beginning part 
of like <laughs> stuff and then, but every single time it's like we gotta hit arms and ass and then, <laughs> I, feel yeah. that. I feel that man yeah so both you guys obviously most people know you guys both went to byu again we had micah uh christian and ma on last week to discuss uh and the the exact same point was brought up about byu refs and we were hoping you guys would come on to defend them a little bit because they were taking some heat last week from both of those guys it's hard to in my opinion it'll be hard to defend but i'm very eager to hear this what in your opinion what is the refing like in provo Pretty sure we have the same opinion as my. <laughs> Dude, after the game, I swear. After the game, if they, I was, like, if I was they like, all the same refs, and so like, obviously they get a lot of heat from the crowd just because our fan base is so good. And so, I don't know. I never thought that they made terrible calls, but I also don't think that there's some there's some of the best refs out there. You know, I just so, I'll just put it this way: they call both sides bad. <laughs> that's a, that's the a thing, though, at least. Because in Hawaii, it's so they call it only for Hawaii. But BYU, just both are bad. So I'm like, I, I think that's better than being biased. There'll be some times after the game. I'm in for BYU are always for BYU. Oh, for <laughs> sure. For sure. They're going to be two feet out and they call in. And that's like <laughs> normal for a long time. <laughs> they have like the challenge system. It's, you know, they get caught a little bit. And so they got to be a little bit more. <laughs> they're gonna be on their game then yeah there are gonna be some times where you just like after a game just like going to locker room just like dying laughing just talking about that because there'll be sometimes like for us like there'll be some horrible calls by the rest we're just we're like, like oh laughing. man yeah. like the other team just heated and you're just like <laughs> dying laughing it's one of the well, it's, 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 all field advantage man it happens exactly all, it's like anywhere in the world it happens that's true it's worse when you're on the road and like i've seen teams are captain doesn't even speak the the uh, the local or the native language of the country. I'm like, how is this guy? The ref's not gonna listen to this guy when he goes up and tries to talk to him. So <laughs> shoves him away. Entertaining always. Um, I get out of that. So yeah. So let's go into let's go into a little uh, of the hobbies here. So I feel like yeah. both of you guys, a lot of you guys are. Um, there there are different kind of players, right? It doesn't matter what sport you're in. It's either you're really into it, like or like you have like your yeah. Tom Brady's who are like just like focus. This is my life, right? And then you have. Like great players uh, off the top of my head, I, I can't name any top of my head, but sorry. But that are like, okay, I have volleyball, but I also need kind of certain hobbies in my life to make sure that my love for volleyball is still there, and that like I'm like, like this is not my whole life, right? I have other stuff outside of volleyball. And, and talk about, I feel like you guys are more kind of type two kind of players when it comes to that. Hey, you guys surf, right? Yeah, yeah. heavy we surfers. Do, uh, we we try to surf as much as we can. Oh, but yeah, for me, it's it's a big part of my life being able to balance like, you know, the grind of volleyball and then being finding ways to you know get away from it and clear your mind. And so for me, me and Brennan, we've grown up doing a lot of fun things. We've been really lucky. Uh, we we rode dirt bikes as a kid. Brennan just bought another dirt bike. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Riding around the neighborhood. Back from the river, and my my dad has a boat. We do like wake surfing and. We try and do some extreme things, but around here, me and Brennan like to golf. Um, we surf, we do, we mountain bike, and pretty much any active sport we try to do. Right. So, so I feel like that's hard when you're overseas, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like when we, we get, it's a lot more difficult. It's kind of just, it's kind of just volleyball overseas. Is, is there something that you maybe look for like overseas? Like let's say you go like to like Italy or Brazil is like okay maybe like they have like I don't know like putt putt golf or something <laughs> like something that you could try and find everywhere like to try and keep your interest in or like a generic topic? Well for me the whole the reason why I went to Brazil was it's a good opportunity first of all but then like it's summer year round. So I went there I had a pool at my apartment and I could go outside and I could go swimming year round and like be outside and then you know, free weekends, I was able to go to the beach and hang out. And, like, that can totally change things for you, you know? Right. Instead of in an apartment in Italy where it's cold or in Russia where, you know, when you have a free weekend, maybe there's not anything warm you can go do. You go, like, maybe <laughs> a castle or something. Wow, 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 it's very nice. That's <laughs> As a knight. <laughs> um, so I want to kind of track back to BYU really quick here. So, Brennan, I mean, coming from, from the same standpoint, I know how it is, like, coming into a program where your brother, your older brother is definitely, like, the top, the man, right? So I know I know at first kind of – because you – your freshman year, you didn't start till like, later towards the year, the latter half, right? 
And yeah. I know, how, like, going into that, did you kind of feel like, for me, I felt the same thing, like, pressure. Like, okay, my brother's this guy, and I kind of live up to the hype because everyone's expecting that. And, uh, I mean, how did you kind of deal with that? And it's just like, or did, were there, was there any pressure? Oh, yeah, there was a ton of pressure. I mean, he created this name. It was, like, pretty much legendary at the school. And so everyone, no matter what, like, if you went to a BYU football game, you knew, like, Taylor Sander, you knew who that was. Like, that's the player you knew on the court. And so, like, every time I would step out on the court, I was like, well, they know my brother, so they, they're going <laughs> to <Yeah. laughs> be like, oh, who's, who's this kid that thinks he can play volleyball too? And, uh, I mean, there was a lot of pressure, but I learned from a young age pretty much how to deal with it just because, like, we were four years apart. So, right like three and a half, four years. And so like growing up ever, like we were just always just like this. And I was coming up right behind him every single time. Right. Um, and so I learned at a young age, just to like not think about it too much and just play my own game. Cause um, I am my own person. Right. So my own game, some, some parts of our game are similar, but um, yeah, I've kind of just taken it as more of a blessing than like, a ton of pressure because I, I can learn a ton from him and I do learn a ton from him. And so I use it as that way instead of like a bad thing, all this pressure. Right on. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. The, so we got two more things for you guys before we, uh, before we let you guys off, uh, we're going to finish off. The second thing will be uh, kind of a, almost like a trivia game quiz that Gage has written up a couple questions. Mm -hmm. First here though, uh, we have been told, by many people that both you guys would make a really good beach volleyball duo. Would you ever, would you guys ever consider going and playing on the AVP when you're finished up with your indoor careers? For sure. It'd be fun to play with Brennan. We could do a little we, split blocking. Dude, we actually played beach. What was it? A week ago? Yeah. We, we ago. my, my dad uh, has a bunch of buddies and they found a court down here in Southern California and we were playing beach. And we, whenever we got on the court together, cause we played like kind of like a Kings, Kings game because there were mm -hmm. some people. Um, it was fun whenever we got on the, the same side together. We just like kind of worked it out. Right, right. So it would be super cool, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Joe's always trying to push me to like some some uh, tournaments as well. I'm just like, uh, yeah. He so kind of drags me out there, but I mean, we enjoy it. We have fun kind of beating up on people because from a young age, we kind of uh, we kind of were out there, and those guys would like bully us, and right, and we were like. 16 years old so we couldn't like we were like at, right at the brink and now that we're now that we're there man it's so fun going out there and just kicking people's asses it's, it's there's nothing better in the whole world dude. especially as a brothers um so we're gonna end with a uh kind of a most likely kind of thing so i'm gonna name about six questions and i want you guys to point to i'll be like most likely the blank and then you guys point to which one right there's only about six or seven so it won't it won't take too long hopefully hopefully it'll be pretty fun here so take time TikTok, TikTok. And, just like yeah, exactly. Yeah, you TikTok. guys been you guys been making some fire TikToks, Taylor. I Bre saw that TikTok in, in Brennan where you're like, what? Throw it back. Yeah, yeah. We, we did some research on social media. <laughs> we <That's> should... <laughs> top notch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first one is most likely to cry in a movie. Watch cry a movie. watching cry, a movie. Watching a movie. Not, yeah. <laughs> no. What movie? What movie is that? Something come to mind. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. I don't know. Lord of the sad. Rings, Last Samurai, La La Land, and Bell. <laughs> Those are my top three I cried in. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll cry like a man. There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> Anything what? sad. I feel that. I feel that. About like a dog or something. Marley you know, and me. God. I'll bring my and to say hi. This is Atlee. Oh. What it do? What's her name? Atlee Sanders. Oh, okay, okay. How are we doing, Atlee? A future volleyball player in the making, right there. Uh, <laughs> next question: Who's most likely to fall asleep during class? That's not even true. You fall asleep. <laughs> I do. I can't fall asleep unless it's a very comfortable setting. So that'd be. <laughs> I, I, Brennan, do you believe this or no? I mean, I can't fall asleep unless I'm in a bed. And so, really, sure. class. I can't, I can't fall asleep during class. Not anymore. I used to fall asleep all the time in high school, but now I can't anymore, which is kind of a record. All right. What a shame. 
<laughs> yeah, no, a curse. Uh, so, if a zombie apocalypse were to happen, who would die first? <laughs> I think, yeah. I think. I would. <laughs> what would you do? What would you do? What would you do that would cause your own demise? There. I don't know. I think I would be like. You try and fight all the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> all at once. Okay. Who is most likely to become the next president of the United States of America? Not me, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. <laughs> okay, here's our last one. We thought, we thought this was pretty good. We thought it was pretty good. Our last one is, who is most likely to cause a world war? Cause a world war. Cause a major catastrophe. How about that? <laughs> this one, because he always wants to invent things that are don't make <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're yeah. gonna, the ideas in his head that he wants to invent something but for inventions guys thank you so much um i hope you and your family are staying safe i hope you guys are uh i still have a loving relationship enjoying the uh the beach bods <laughs> You know, that's the most important thing. It's not about your best blah, blah, blah. It's about the Arm farms, right baby. It's all about that. Eliminating the, eliminating the dad bod. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us on Out of System. I hope you guys are staying safe and mahalos. Thank Oops. you, guys. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And we're back here. Um, gosh, that was fun. That was good seeing a different perspective. They're got to be one of the most chill people I've ever met in my life. Yeah, they're so mellow. That was a for the le- Yeah, especially for the level that Taylor and all that he's accomplished. He's so laid back. You see that when you when the national team Jimmy practicing, like he's just the most relaxed, laid back guy. Like he gets along with everybody. I don't think he. Could, I don't think anybody has any issues with him. I, <laughs> I've never seen him be confrontational or anything. So I think it's so crazy that he doesn't sleep. He seemed like like he just like I don't mean to like putting labels on the guy, but if you see him like talk, you're just like that's the most chill guy. He'd be able to sleep anywhere. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but I and when they when they brought up uh, well when I asked him the question about the AVP play on the AVP, that du- that partnership would be ridiculous. Those two, Don't. the style of play, they both are so similar. They both high they flying, defense, crazy yeah. arms, good defenders, good receivers. It would be fun to watch. And it was funny when Gage brought up us two. <laughs> like, the difference between us and them playing together is <laughs> there's a vast difference yeah, because no me and Gage standing right at about 6'6", six, six, one, one of us blocking like on the AVP would be <laughs> int- I All I do is seal line and do let pull. <laughs> Do we pull nine percent of the times? I mean, luckily pull so we, much. We, luckily we have really good. <laughs> hope for errors stuff. or hope they hit it right into our lap. <laughs> that was fun playing beach with Max. Max, you are the Max has the has an insane <laughs> heavy arm. Max goes a hundred every time. And the thing yeah. is, okay, you think he blocked? No, Max goes through the block. That's what's so legendary. Like I love playing. Shots with are them. limited for sure yeah. when I'm playing beach. <laughs> whatever, like whatever we're playing beach, and you're like, should I have done this? I'm like, Max, just hit the crap out of the ball. Just don't <laughs> just, just don't the game at all. Yes, uh, coach. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I mean, the, the Sander brothers. What more can you say? I mean, accomplished on or off the court. Future. Uh, they're gonna be. If you see them on the beach, they'll probably be absolutely ripped. They're all about the beach bod. We're <laughs> we're on that lifting as, as well. Yes, sir. Max is on as well. Uh, so if you see us around, don't don't be afraid to kind of compliment our biceps or try. We've been working on, you know. Give us some love, guys. <laughs> guys, this has been a phenomenal show. We've had so much fun. Um, I hope quickly before we sign off for all you guys, we are going for the giveaways. Please follow our TikTok. We're probably gonna be doing our next giveaway on our TikTok, a pretty sick giveaway. And then as well, we have our website up and running. Uh, we posted the link several times. Our blogs are on there. We're telling you what's going on with the show, our ideas, where we want to go with it. And uh, overall, we got a lot of exciting stuff coming to you guys. Exactly. Guys, this has been Out, out of, of System. system.